Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. Um, today we're going to be talking about the fundamental data types in x64. So there's actually only a handful of these. Uh, the CPU inherently only understands just a couple of data types. Uh, depending on your assembler, we're using Massim mostly, the Microsoft assembler. Uh, you can define structures and things like that. Uh, but generally speaking, there's not a lot of fundamental data types. And at the end, we'll have a look at defining a few variables with these data types. Okay, so there's basically three categories of data type. We've got ourselves the integers, uh, the floating point data types, and there's a few extra SIMD data types, which are really just packed versions of the integers and floating points. Um, ZMM word. I've got these in my slides, even though my CPU is not capable of AVX 512. Uh, there is actually a new instruction set coming along eventually. Uh, it's it's in a few CPUs at the moment, but I don't have anything that's uh, AVX 512 capable. Um, I think most people don't. Um, yeah, but ZMM word will be the new uh, register type or the new data type when those new CPUs come about. Okay, a little bit about integers, signed versus unsigned. In assembly, uh, we don't have type safety. Um, Signed and unsigned is really up to the programmer, so you have to keep track of that yourself. And really the only difference is in a few instructions that you choose. So if you're using unsigned integers, you want to choose div and mul to divide and multiply. And if you're using signed integers, you want to use idiv and imul. Uh, for other operations like addition and subtraction, there's no difference. So there's only one uh, mnemonic supplied, so add and sub. Uh, you use whether your data is signed or unsigned. But the point is that signed and unsigned is up to the programmer to keep track of. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, two's complement. So generally speaking, the x86 line uses two's complement. And if you want to know a bit more about two's complement for signed integers, uh, just have a look at Wikipedia. Uh, it pretty much just means that there's a sign bit. The most significant bit over the left-hand side of your integers is the sign bit, and when that's zero, then it means that the number is positive, and you can just read the binary to figure out what the number represents. Uh, if the sign bit is a one, then the number is negative, and in order to figure out what it means, you've got to complement all of the bits and add one. Yeah, that's two's complement for you. It's an interesting topic. Maybe we should do some videos on that. And maybe we shouldn't. Uh, integer data type ranges. All right, so there's only four basic integer data types. Yeah, the byte is 8 bits wide, it's got a range of a byte. Um, when it's unsigned, we go from 0 to 255, and when it's signed, you've got a range from negative 2 to the 7 all the way up to 2 to the 7 minus 1. Uh, next, we've got words. These are 16 bits wide. Uh, word is generally the term that refers to the fundamental data type of your CPU, and because x64 comes from the 8086 CPU family, um, word means 16 bits, yeah, because the original word for those CPUs was 16 bits wide. Even though nowadays in a 64-bit CPU, the fundamental data type is probably a Q word or quad word, 64 bits. Anyway, the word is 16 bits wide, so it ranges from 0 to 65,000 when it's unsigned, and when it's signed, we've got negative 2 to the 15 all the way up to 2 to the 15 minus 1. Uh, the next data type is the D word, or the double word. Uh, I should say that the C equivalent to a word is a short int, and the C equivalent to a D word is an int. Uh, these are 32 bits wide, yeah, you can see the ranges just there, and Q word is 8 bytes wide, or 64 bits wide. These are long long in C, or C++, yeah, they've got 64 bits of range there. Okay, next we've got a bunch of floating point data types. So IEEE 754 is the floating point data type. I actually did a few videos, a little mini series on IEEE 754 a while back. I'd like to maybe redo it because I've learned a bunch of tricks for converting to and from uh, IEEE 754 since I made those videos and it's a really interesting topic. Uh, maybe we can do some more videos on that. Uh, anyway, four, four, four bytes uh, or a real four in assembly is a single precision float or just float in C++. This is 32 bits wide, it's got a 1 bit for the sign, an 8 bit exponent, and a 23 bit mantissa. Would you believe? 
Uh, next, we've got the real eight, which is the same as a double in C++ um, or an IEEE 754 double precision float. Uh, we've got one sine bit, 11 bit exponent and 52 bit mantissa. And the interesting one down here is the real 10. So in a lot of C++ compilers, you don't have this available. Um, well, I shouldn't say a lot. In the Microsoft C++ compiler, you don't have real 10 available. Uh, but this is extended, extended precision float. Uh, 80 bits wide, huge jump in precision over your doubles. Um, one sine bit, 15 bit exponent and 64 bit mantissa. Real 10 is only used with the x87 floating point unit. So I've never done any videos on the x87 floating point unit, but it's interesting the massive gain in precision that it offers you. Um, you kind of take a performance hit with that gain because you can't use um, Real 10 with SSE packed uh, SIMD style instructions. Um, yeah, but it's interesting that in assembly, if you want extra precision, you can go straight to the x87 FPU. Uh, nowadays, it's almost never used, uh, almost never used at all. So maybe we can have some videos on that. It's interesting stuff. Okay, and finally, we've got a few SIMD data types. So these are used for SIMD packed data. We'll have a lot, you know, a lot of videos dedicated to SIMD as we, as we move forwards. But first of all, we've got to have a look at just general purpose assembly. Uh, but we've got XMM word, which is 128 bit SIMD uh, data type. We've got YMM word, which come about from AVX. I should say XMM word is from SSE. Yeah, so the SSE instruction sets use XMM words or 128 bit registers. Um, AVX uses YMM words, 256 bit registers. And ZMM word in AVX 512, which is red because I don't have it in my CPU, uh, is 512 bits wide. Huge registers. Um, I don't think this is going to get implemented in a very normal way. It seems as though uh, Intel is staggering the implementation of AVX 512, and it's uh, turning it off for most of the modern CPUs, even though I believe they're capable of AVX 512. Anyway, it's up to Intel. Okay, so here's just a little bit of a summary of all of the fundamental data types, and we've also got the, well, we've got the names of them over here. Uh, the type or the basic family, integer, floating point, or SIMD, then the number of bits, the number of bytes that they consume in, uh, in RAM, uh, how you would define a pointer to them, and how you would define a variable with them in your, say, data segment. So what I might do is just jump over to Visual Studio and have a bit of a play with some of these. So, for instance, if we wanted to define a byte, um, if we wanted to define a byte, the first thing that we need is a data segment. Um, then you say a name, so we give a, a byte a name, we might say like my byte, uh, then we say db, you say db or byte, either way, and then you give it a value, so we could say 78. And if I just put a bit of a breakpoint right here and hit run, we should be able to set a watch on my byte when it gets there. Okay, add a watch. Yeah, there we go, my byte 78. Good stuff. So all we're doing there is defining a byte called my byte somewhere in RAM uh, with a value 78. Um, you could define a word if you want. So we could say like um, my word and use the term word, or you could use the term DW for define word and give it some value. Exactly the same thing as before. Uh, if you don't care what value it's initialized to, you can put a question mark there. Okay, so defining integers is fair enough. Uh, real or floating point values are pretty much just as easy, so we could just give it a name. I'll call it like hjukur, and I'll say real4, and then 89.5. Give that a bit of a save and give it a bit of a run. And we should be able to set a watch on that too. Yeah, there you go, 89.5. Okay, so defining data in the data segment, pretty straightforward. Um, you just use the final column there. Um, uh, if you're defining these packed versions, you can't give them initial values. Yeah, you have to give them question marks, but we're not really talking about that. Uh, if you want to use a pointer, so if you want to use a pointer, then you use these these values just here. Their columns are a bit strange because I had to put in an extra margin. But let's let's do a pointer. So if we've got if we've got our byte, my byte, set to 78, then we could say something like mov. Uh, we'll look at the mov instruction and probably a million other instructions pretty soon. 
Um, bike PTR. Uh, my bike. Oh, file save. Yeah, so this is this is just saying that whatever my byte points to, so my byte is just a you know it's an address in RAM somewhere. Uh, at the moment, it's pointing to the value seventy eight because that's what we initialized it to. But if you yeah, if you want, you can move that the value of that pointer uh, into eight L. So this should, if if things are going if things are going to play, and this should move seventy eight into eight L. Um, where's my register window gone? Windows. Uh, registers. All right, is AL right here? CC at the moment. There you go, four E. So I'll bet. I mean, I I can't do the maths in my head, but I'll bet that four E is hexadecimal for seventy eight. Um, because that's so common, you actually don't need byte pointer like that. So you don't have to specify that it's a byte pointer. I mean, the assembler will just figure it out. So you can just do this if you want. Yeah, same thing. Uh, it's interesting. Just a couple of a couple of extra interesting points. So first of all, the CPU doesn't care about data type at all. So if we've got a float, say we've got uh, my float, and we'll set it to like real four and sixty seven point two, that's four bytes wide. Just because that's how big a real a real is, a real four is. Uh, if you want, you can move that into EAX. EAX is also four four bytes wide, and if you want. Uh, you can just say my float just like that. Yeah, there you go. So EAX is not meant for floating point, but as you can see, there is just zero type safety in assembly. I mean, if you want to move a floating point value into an integer register, go right ahead. Um, the other thing that I want to mention, this is really, really cool. So assembly is really, really close to machine code. It's actually so close that if we just put a couple of instructions here, I'll just, a couple of dummy instructions, mob EAX, EAX. Okay, so say we're programming along in assembly, we're doing mob EAX and mob RDI, and it's really great. What you might want to do is in the middle of that, just start coding machine code. And you can do that with define byte or DB. So if we just put DB there, uh, not in our data segment, if we just put it in our code segment, then we're free to just start defining bytes. Let's just something like that. Okay, so these numbers just here will be interpreted by the program as machine code. The CPU is just going to execute mov EAX EAX and then whatever this happens to equal in machine code. Let's just run this. Um, usually you would never do this, but it's interesting to have a bit of a play around. So. Okay, I put a breakpoint just there because I don't want to execute this. I don't know what it means. I probably shouldn't have typed it. But if we go up to debug, we can have a look at the disassembly window. We can see what it means. Okay, there's the mov just there. Uh, my amazing instruction that I typed accidentally in um, in machine code means sub eax eight b one seven whatever, and then a bit of roll <laughs> rotate left bl. Yeah, so anytime you want from assembly, you can start coding in machine code. And that occasionally comes up as useful because maybe the assembler isn't using the exact instruction you want when you use the mnemonic. So you can just type the machine code to the exact instruction you want. Um, yeah, it comes up sometimes. Sometimes you want to code in machine code. Anyway, that was just a little introduction to the data types, the fundamental data types in assembly language or x64 assembly language. And I think next time we'll get onto something else, maybe some basic instructions. Uh, before we go, I've got a Facebook where you can go over and like What's a Creel. I've got a Patreon uh, where you can support what I'm doing here. And I've also got a music channel. So I'll put links to all of this stuff down below. And I want you to have a really good day. Adios.